Welcome back. On to the second topic of the day. The Kano State Government has returned to paying the 18,000 Naira minimum wage. This was stated by the Special Advisor of Media to Governor Abdullahi Ganduje, by, uh, that's uh, Salihu Tanko Yakasai. He also added that the action was due to the recession caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. It was also reported that the House of Representatives is considering an amendment to the 1999 Constitution by removing matters relating to wages from the exclusive legislative list to the concurrent legislative list. If the bill becomes law, states and local governments will determine different wages for their workers. Joining us to discuss this is a public affairs analyst, Femi Lawson. Good evening, Femi Lawson. What's your reaction to this? And uh, I would like you to consider the excuse or the reasons given by Kano State government. Looking at the reality, is 30,000 naira sustainable? Hmm. Well, what is this? You see, the government failed to achieve one reality. That reality is that the government has uh, selfishly consider the implication you know of the covid 19 pandemic on the economy on itself rather than also considering the toll it has taken on the citizens particularly these workers the truth is that government all over the world have been doing the possible best they can to alleviate you know the economic hardship that been faced by the citizens as a result of the pandemic but here in Kano, you have a governor who has decided that rather than alleviating the you know the hardship of the workers, he has rather instead decided to elevate it. It is not a decision well thought out because this is a state where, of course, the thirty thousand minimum wage itself is not enough to take home. Now, reduce reverting back to eighteen thousand tells a lot about how sensitive. These governments are to the plight of the ordinary citizens. It is a very interesting decision at this very crucial moment. At this very crucial moment, you know, I, I can understand. Uh, imagine if I'm in this, I mean, one of those workers' shoes, and that has to do with there is a, you know, harsher economy, and now you want to also make me collect something smaller. But what about the government? Where will they get money from? If the federal location drops, if the price of crude drops, you know how it is here in this part of the world. Most times, these salaries come from federal location. And if we have a decrease in this, I know the easier way is the shoe work on their IGR. But how realistic is that at this point in time? Even after we escape the consequences of COVID-19, there are only the circumstances in the future that will likely bring about the need for a review of wages or you know salaries like the Canada kind of government is doing. I think rather than pushing the burden of the current situation on the worker whose wages have not even been enough to take them home, this should have been an opportunity for this state government to rethink and redirect their approach towards generating funds to run their state. You cannot in any way sustain, even if you are paying 5,000 dollars minimum wage, you cannot sustain a system where you have to wait for 30 days and go to Abuja with cap in hand, you know, to beg for allocation to run the affairs of your state. And these are states that have a lot of potentials. These are states that have a lot of mineral resources that is enough not only to pay workers a living wage, but to also satisfy the infrastructural needs of their state. But because we practice a system that has given so much power to the central and taking every you know, authority and economic empowerment away from the state, we continue to have what we're having. The people should not be punished for the inefficiency of the government. If governments, particularly these governors, cannot begin to think about how to creatively, without unnecessarily exploiting the people, raise revenue to run their state, then they should have themselves to blame, not the people. We have continually demanded that we should demand for a restructuring and remove so many things from the exclusive list of this in our constitution that will empower the state to function, 
that will empower the state to be economically viable. Take, for instance, states like Zamfara, states like Kogi, states like Osho, out of business being poor. But today they are struggling to pay their worker salaries while they are sitting on enormous mineral resources in their states. It is not wise. So these governors should be courageous enough and begin to demand for a true federal system that will encourage productivity at state level, rather than waiting for monthly allocation from high money generated from the Niger Delta or exploitative taxes that are being imposed on our people. So that is what the state should begin to look at. That beyond the pandemic, there may be the need tomorrow for us to review wages and salaries and we'll come back to square one. See, when you go into the issue of uh, resource control and some form of uh, restructuring, and that takes me to the second part of, the, uh, of my opening rem uh, 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 remark on this discussion, that has to do with the gist about House of Reps considering moving the, the minimum wage or moving the issue of salaries to, uh, is it concurrent now, from exclusive list. Now, some would see it as that's a dangerous move. I've listened to labor union leaders saying that then some states are going to starve them to death. But some would say that might be an opportunity for states that are doing well to even pay above this ridiculous minimum wage that we are still fighting about. So what is your own position on that? Should we leave it for the federal to determine? Yeah, you see, you cannot continue to have a system where some, some people, somebody will sit in Abuja and decide that a state like River Lagos should pay the same amount of salaries and wages for his worker, you know, just like uh, Zanfa and Osho and Iju. It's The federal government has no business in determining how much a state will pay its worker. These are part of the deficiencies and anomalies that are inculcated in our constitution. And that is why beyond the, you know, the, 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 the little, little items, beyond the little, little remedy being fashioned by the National Assembly to address so many of the anomalies in our constitution. I think the constitution demands, you know, a holistic review. We need to properly restructure the system to accommodate some of those things that are really taking us back as a country. The truth is that the federal government, like I said, has no business in determining you know, what Sokoto should pay its workers you know, or what Lagos should pay its workers. It should be the decision of the state based on their capacity. And it will encourage productivity because when we restructure and we give powers to the state to be productive, don't be surprised that a state like Zamfara they end up coming out paying more salaries and wages than states like Oyo and Ogo State because of the economic potentials that are buried underground in this state that are not explored. So the moment we encourage productivity and the workers in Zamfara can produce more wealth for Zamfara State. Zamfara State will have no reason not to pay its workers as much as they deserve. Not, there, not waiting for Abuja to determine how much a worker in Osho or Zamfara or Kudu should be paid. It is unfair, and it is not really, it doesn't speak well about what we call, you know, a federal system of government. Femi, uh, uh, like I always say, this is part of my philosophy as an individual, that let's take one step at a time, and what you're talking about might end up reflecting in the restructuring that you subscribe to. But as we speak, the fear of the labor union leaders is if you do that, some states will never agree to the 30,000 naira minimum wage. And they also cited example of, um, you know, when local government were being, you know, were being handled by states, we realized that many school teachers were not able to pay teachers their salaries until they have to be paying from the, uh, uh, from the federal, from the first line charge. And that's when they were able to pay. So, if you say the, the, the inability of the state, okay, you know, to or local government to pay workers, it's not due to the you know to the to the to, to the fact that this government at state level or the local government were not willing to pay. The truth is that, irrespective of how you want to define it, 
they are incapacitated because of the limited resources that are available at this state and the local government level. Okay. Are we saying that since Salah government took over the payment of primary school teachers, has that not been time they were hold salaries? Have they gotten their arrears and their remunerations as I went due? Have they gotten all their allowances as I went due? What we need is to encourage productivity that will increase wealth. When the states are economically viable, nobody will be interested in who pays what and who pays who. Because we are all assured that at the end of the month, we are sure of getting our wages and salaries. But even if you give the job of paying even the gate man in your house to the federal government, and the resources are not available, be rest assured that the time will come that you go back to square one, and there will be no money to pay, and it will be the same story of how you were not able to pay as an individual, and now that federal government has taken over the responsibility. So I think what we should encourage more is not this shortcut approach of initiating laws that give so much power to the central. The federal government has no business in certain businesses that it's currently engaged in. That is the truth. The federal government has no business in paying primary school teachers. The federal government has no business in, you know, in determining the, the wages of workers in my local government. Let state pay according to their capa capacity. It will make state to be more creative because there will be local demand, there will be local agitations, and there will be negotiations for productivity. But if we don't do that, you can continue to make laws to put everything on the table of Abuja. And the central is overburdened, the central is so overwhelmed, and it cannot function beyond what we are currently saying. Exactly. Maybe this is going to be like uh, you may have to peak because uh, the, we are trying to round off the show soon. We may have to peak, and I, I want to put you on the spot now. As we speak, whether we yeah. like it or not, Nigeria is already on the second phase of the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic. And by my instinct, we may also go into another lockdown. In fact, the recent one from the federal government is that lockdown is likely to happen soon if some certain things are not stopped. What am yeah. I trying to say? Yeah. That means more difficult days are ahead. Sure. And you have given us a whole lot of uh, a piece of advice on how yeah. government should go about it. Sure. Now, how do we survive this harsh condition that is coming? Should we look at uh, reducing salary, or we should continue the 30,000, or we should just owe the workers when the economy picks back, then they will collect their money? The truth and the question we should begin to ask government is this, and I think the media has a fundamental role to play in this. Now that Kano State Government, for instance, came out that it's reducing salaries of workers because of the prevailing economic you know, circumstances, as Governor Kanduji or any other state government or federal government considering similar actions, been bold enough to tell us how much more of his own salaries and emoluments and allowances he has been able to reduce. Have you reduced the payment that you are giving to political office order every month? Okay. Have you reduced the bogus allowances of members of the National Assembly? Have you reduced the bogus allowances you know, of uh, state legislators? Have you reduced the number of vehicles that you put petrol in while you fly jets to Abuja from Kano okay. and they drive empty to Abuja and they drive empty back to Kano? Have you been able to reduce all these frivolous spendings by the government at various state levels? Why should it be the ordinary Nigerian citizens that must be considerate when there is hardship or when there is need for us to adjust? The government must lead by example. Government must adjust and accommodate the, 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 the feelings of the people in whatever decision is taken. Only a few days ago, it was revealed that the president and the vice president will be spending 2.4 billion naira on traveling alone this year. How sensible is that for a nation that cannot pay 30,000 naira minimum wage? How do you tell a Nigerian worker to take 18,000 naira when? President and Vice President will be traveling with 2.8 billion naira in a year that is uncertain. These are issues. Government must lead by example. We cannot continue to make the Nigerian workers and the Nigerian people scapegoats for every action that we have to take to move the society forward. Government right. must be ready to sacrifice. Stakeholders must be ready to sacrifice. It is not only left for the citizens to sacrifice. 
Democracy does not work in that way. Thank you so much. Thank you for your position. Thank you, Femi Lawson, a public affairs analyst, for your position on this Thank issue. You. And we yeah. hope and appeal to Kano State Government to have a rethink by going back to the 30,000. I understand that it's already a law, and therefore that law should not be broken. Thank you. Of course. And uh, Femi Lawson, Happy New Year once again. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. I'm afraid this is what we call it a wrap on today's edition of Plus Politics. Plus Politics returns on Monday with another interesting topic. And uh, trust me, it will be hot, it will be interesting, and you can continue the conversation on all our social media platforms. Till we see you again, I am yours truly, Kayade Ladende, saying bye for now. <laughs>